Well, hello there. Good morning. It's um, Thursday morning, so we're going to turn to our prayers. Another beautiful day. Um, <clears throat> fantastic weather this week. And um, enjoy it while we can, is what I always say, living in the British Isles. Um, but yeah, it looks really nice out there. So just take a moment, get yourselves a, a drink, get yourselves comfortable, and then we're going to pray together. Let's keep a moment's quiet before we go any further. Lord Jesus, by your Spirit, would you come to us this day? Refresh us in body, soul and spirit and strengthen our faith. For we ask in your name. Amen. O oh Lord, Open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Creator of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us, in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine <coughs> excuse me, in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Some words based on Psalm 67. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Or let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you would judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. We have two Psalms, this Psalm 143 and Psalm 146, and I'm going to say them together, one after the other. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servants, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. My spirit faints within me, my heart within me is desolate. I remember the time past, I muse upon all your deeds. I consider the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. <coughs> o Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, 
lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I shall walk in, for I lift my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies, for I flee to you for refuge. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for your righteousness' sake. Bring me out of trouble. In your faithfulness slay my enemies, and destroy all the adversaries of my soul. For truly, I am your servant. And then, Psalm 146. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. As long as I have my being, I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in any human power, for there is no help in them. When their breath goes forth, they return to the earth. On that day, all their thoughts perish. Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise for ever, who gives justice to those that suffer wrong, and bread to those who hunger. The Lord looses those that abound, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous, the Lord watches over the stranger in the land, he upholds the orphan and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down the lord shall reign for ever your god o zion throughout all generations hallelujah glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be for ever amen We go down to the um, reading from the New Testament, which is from Romans chapter 2, and it's verse 17, and then to the end. But if you call yourself a Jew, and rely on the law, and boast of your relation to God, and know his will, and determine what is best because you are instructed in the law, and if you are sure that you are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth. You then, that teach others, will you not teach yourself? While you preach against stealing, do you steal? You that forbid adultery, do you commit adultery? You that abhor idols, do you rob temples? You that boast in the Lord, <clears throat> do you dishonour God by breaking the law? For, as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Circumcision indeed is of value if you obey the law. But if you break the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. So, if those who are uncircumcised keep the requirements of the law, will not their uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? Then those who are physically uncircumcised, but keep the law, will condemn you that have the written code and circumcision, but break the law. For a person is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is true circumcision something external and physical rather a person is a jew who is one inwardly and real circumcision is a matter of the heart it is spiritual and not literal such a person receives praise not from others <clears throat> but from god 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we ask for understanding of your word this day and how it applies to our lives. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It's difficult sometimes to um, <clears throat> get the thread of a passage when we jump part way through. So on Tuesday we were looking at Romans chapter 1 and uh, verse 18 onwards and then we missed a few verses of, of chapter 2 and we begin in verse 17. But what Paul is saying here is this, he, he's, he's highlighting what everybody knows and what everybody knows is this that there isn't a single one of us who fully obeys God all of the time every day every minute of every day every second of every minute somewhere in the day when we compare ourselves with the law that God gave through Moses we will fall down and it does say elsewhere in Romans that we, we've all sinned and we've all, we all fall short of the glory of God. In other words, none of us quite make it. The illustration I used the other day was of um, the bridge that we tried to build across a valley. And we might get most of the way there, but we can none of us, no human being ever, can fully complete the bridge and get across the valley. And if you like, that valley represents us and, and, and our relationship with God in terms of perfection none of us have the right to have a relationship with God by our own works and our own deeds and our own righteousness it needs God to complete that bridge for us so <clears throat> sometimes I've seen illustrations of, of the cross of Jesus where the cross bar in the cross has been illustrated as a bridge that goes across the valley that's one way to think of it and so Paul is saying, for those who are criticising him, Paul is a Jew. He says in Philippians, you know, he, he's a Hebrew of Hebrews. He's from the tribe of Benjamin. He was circumcised on the eighth day. Um, he was a Pharisee. He was making progression um, in terms of um, his, his training to, be, to become a Pharisee and a rabbi. And Paul had everything that he would want that constitutes a faithful Jew but Paul knows more than anybody else even with all of his zeal remember Paul um, was on the road to Damascus you can read about that in the book of Acts chapter 9 and he's on his way to Damascus with letters from the the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem that if Paul finds any people who are following Jesus who are Jews he has the right to arrest them and to persecute them and here's this young man zealous for the law of God he was confronted with the vision of the risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ and the accounting acts tells us that for three days Paul is struck with blindness and for those three days as you would because he's seen this vision of Jesus but now he's blind he spends those three days in prayer seeking God's will changing his mind because he was heading in one direction and now he sees God in a whole different light altogether and as he's absorbing that change and what it means for him is in prayer to God and a Christian disciple called Ananias who the Lord also appears to in a vision is afraid to go and see Paul but the Lord says you need to go and pray for this man and Ananias says but this man is persecuting your your people in this city and, and the Lord says to Ananias go because this man is my chosen servant he will bring my message before kings and rulers of the Gentiles and Ananias goes to to see Saul who is in um, a house on Straight Street in Damascus and he is instructed to lay his hands on Saul as he's called then and to pray for him and as Ananias prays for him it says something like scales fell off Paul's eyes and he could see you know and I'm, and I'm pretty sure that um, that line in Amazing Grace I was blind but now I see 
may have been based on that or the healing or the healing of the blind man in john's gospel but paul literally was blind and now he could see the lord jesus christ so he knows full well that being circumcised and obeying the law of moses and, and being the best person you can be still isn't enough and so what he's doing is agitating people here to say okay you say you obey the law so if you say do not steal are you sure you're not stealing as an example and he goes through different things like stealing and and um, adultery adultery and various other things and the worship of idols and paul is making the point that actually ultimately whether we're a jew or whether we're a gentile we need our lives to be completed by jesus christ that doesn't mean that god has finished with the jewish people by the way i believe he still has a plan and a covenant with them which he will um, fulfill but it will be fulfilled in the lord jesus christ and through his work but paul knows full well that by obeying the law that isn't enough to have a relationship with god which is brought through knowing jesus remember one of the um, most famous conversations that the lord jesus had is um, recorded for us in john chapter 3 where he talks to nicodemus and where he says to nicodemus you know um, unless unless you're born again you cannot you cannot even see the kingdom of heaven and he has this this dialogue with nicodemus where he eventually comes to that most famous verse verse 16 of chapter 3 for god so loved the world that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and here we are confronted with this basic fact as good as we think we may be we all need jesus because he is the one who provides salvation he is the one who provides a relationship with almighty god he is the one who provides the gift of eternal life and he is the one who is the way to the father and that in essence is what paul is trying to say in these few verses as he discusses circumcision and covenant and what it means and he will say much more later on in romans let's pray lord may we know that gift which is that gift of faith which comes to us through the lord jesus christ may he be at the heart of our faith may he be in our hearts this day and may we truly know what it means to be children born again of your spirit for we ask in jesus name amen i'm going to um, continue with our prayers in just a moment we've got some words of response and then we will look at um, the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. Some words of response and um, reflection based on Isaiah chapter 43. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. <clears throat> I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. 
in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. When we come to our prayers in the collect, the prayer for the day, it um, <clears throat> mentions Justin Martyr. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Justin, Justin Martyr um, is one of the, the other Christians in those first um, couple of centuries of, of the church. And he was also called... Um, Justin the philosopher and the reason was he was a young man brought up in the teaching of Greek philosophy and he speaks of Greek philosophy as, as almost being um, the gospel before the gospel was revealed um, eventually Justin became a Christian and um, he's called martyr because he was martyred for his faith so um, when that's mentioned in the prayers you'll realize what that's about and it was one of the early martyrs of the christian faith in church history a very faithful teacher of the gospel so let us pray lord in our prayers today we think about all those who are doing their very best to make it in this life for themselves and their, for their families. They have the best of intentions and yet they don't have a relationship with you. I pray that you would reveal yourself to them, perhaps people known to us, <clears throat> perhaps not. Who are reaching out to you even now who may not even know that that's what they're doing but just asking those questions of life why am i here what am i doing what is my purpose and where is my life going and what's at the end of it i pray for those people today that you would reveal yourself to them today in our prayers lord i want to um, bring before you those who are struggling with their health in body, soul or spirit who need you to reach into their lives as you reached Saul who then became Paul who was blinded but you restored his sight I pray for your healing touch for those known to us and for those who are reaching out to you today In our prayers today, Lord, I want to mention before you this land which has a heritage of Judeo-Christianity. Laws and a heritage based on the Ten Commandments and the teaching of the Bible. I want to pray for a return to your word. And so I pray for our King Charles and the royal family, especially the King, the head of the Church of England, that he would know you in a deep an increasing way I want to pray for his government that you would raise up people who are after your own heart and desire what you desire that this nation would once again be led in a way that's pleasing to you and in our prayers today Lord we bring ourselves to you the things upon our own hearts as we keep a moment of silence as we bring our prayers together the collect the prayer for today God our Redeemer 
who through the folly of the cross taught your martyr just in the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ. Remove from us every kind of error that we, like him, may be firmly grounded in the faith. And make your name known to all the peoples, <clears throat> through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Do have um, a blessed weekend, and God willing, I will see you on Tuesday, as we finish some words to... Um, bless one another the lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life amen let us bless the lord thanks be to god amen see you soon folks <laughs>